Welcome everyone to Mail Fuzz TV. I am Peter and today I'm going to be talking about Black Mirror Season 6 Episode 2. It is called Lock Henry. So full spoilers for the episode. And yes, this is an episode set in Scotland. Uh, I don't know if anyone's expecting me to have some weird, <laughs> I don't know, personal takes about that. I, I don't think I do. Um, I was cringing a little bit early on in the story. Because there's a, a little portion at the start where it felt like it was almost going to be like Get Out, but in Scotland, and that was kind of weird. <laughs> it made me feel kind of weird. So, um, but, you know, it kind of evolves and it becomes other things and it's doing other stuff. And I think what's interesting about this season so far, and now that I'm two episodes in, is that I feel like this is two episodes in a row where it feels like Bricker, more so than he did in previous years of Black Mirror, he's almost like trying to make it not actually a twist, uh, although there's definitely a twist in this episode, but it's, it's almost like he doesn't want people to get, like, immediately what the episode is really about, or what it's saying about modern society, because, you know, people go into Black Mirror now with their analytical brains switched on, and they're going to sort of see, oh, what's it going to be talking about now? Are we going to be talking about social media and its effect on people? Are we going to be talking about, you know, streaming services and AI and shit like the last episode? And I feel like he almost is wanting to, like, sort of keep the audience on their toes as to, like, get into that point. And I think the one, like, cri main critique that I had of the last episode was, that, which I enjoyed very much, by and large, was that maybe there was just too many things layered on top of each other that maybe it started to, like, get lost in the shuffle a little bit. And I think this episode has that as well, where it's seeding some things and some of it is there from the get-go we can see it later on when it eventually does become very obvious what the episode is getting at and what it's talking about but it's not as like i would say focused from the get-go uh as far as like feeling like everything and that's not to say that you have to make it clear what your themes are or your intentions by the end of the episode are like very early on some of my favorite episodes don't do that but I th when I think of San Junipero, which was referenced in this episode, actually, uh, in a slight little way, um, and like Show Up and Dance and like some of my other favorite episodes, like I feel like they just like I don't know had a a more straightforward, engaging story to begin with that hooked you into the characters, and then from there, like it kind of like you know, you realized how the themes came together as the story went on, and that's, like, the more normal way to do it. It almost feels like now Bricker's putting in red herrings, like, thematic red herrings of, like, where we think this is going and what it's going to be about. Um, because there's a few comments early on, some awkward comments about diversity, because, you know, this is a Scottish man who's brought his American girlfriend to meet his mother because they're going to be making a documentary together, and there's just a few comments here or there about diversity or wokeness, and it's like, oh, and, th you know, there was proper uncomfortable, and I was like, oh, is this where we're going with this? And it ends up not being where we really go with it, ultimately. It's it's mostly just trying to paint, uh, I guess, a realistic picture of the type of people you might find in a small, like, village like this. Um, Maybe there's a little bit of thematic relevance uh, if I dig deeper as we go, but it, it's not, like the heart of what the story is. Um, and it, it ties in, actually, again, to the, the, like, critiquing the sort of thing that Netflix do. In fact, Streamberry, which was introduced last episode, at least I think it was introduced last episode, if that appeared in, like, season five or before, then I've forgotten about it. But that's two episodes in a row where this fake version of Netflix, Streamberry, is uh, brought up. But here, it's the true crime obsession, it's the making a murderer and all that stuff. None of which I actually watched, because that's not really my thing. Um, but, you know, this presents a story where, for the first, like, ten minutes, it's this social awkward stuff of, like, bringing someone to your hometown and them feeling like an outsider. And then it quickly turns when we get the backstory of what went down at Lock Henry, which was a local turned out to be this, you know serial killer who would like torture and do weird sexual stuff to his victims and immediately uh, pia the girlfriend is like oh we should make a documentary about this instead this is far more interesting it's far more I I intoxicating people will actually watch this it's not some weird niche thing this will actually get eyeballs on it 
And it's like, okay, so you like maybe they're doing a thing here where you've got like an outsider sort of exploiting things, even though she's kind of setting it up with the best of intentions. Um, but and it's not quite that either, although there's maybe like a little taste of that as well. Um, but the people who are here are all for it, you know. The so the best, well, not the best friend because he's, he's not been here in a long time, but um, the main character, Davis, his old friend, sure, who works at the local pub he's like all game for this as well because he's like oh it's a ghost town uh, that's how the subject even comes up is she, P- pia keeps asking why is this place dead why is there no one here and it turns out because there was this heinous serial killer um and it kind of just turned it into a ghost town and he's like yeah this will bring in tourists this will bring attractions this will like put us on the map again it's this kind of like you know commercial goal and right from the get-go, Davis, like, he wants to be this director, he wants to make documentaries. Stuart kind of makes fun of him for wanting everything named after him. Um, it's not something that it he- leans on heavily on his own. It's more other people around him make jokes about him being like that, rather than him himself. But it sets up that for his character. And from there, it's them looking into this, this story. And, you know, we get this old school kind of like because these murders happened in the 90s so we get this old like tv footage style stuff and stuff that's made to look like vhs shot in the 90s and as he's telling the story and then they go looking into it and Stuart's mom had a box of like the old news reports and things like that and they start assembling this and that kind of um and then it gets a bit more cynical when they take it to a, a company a studio who might you know distribute it and they say, what's the hook? Is there something new to find? You know, all on the personal angle, which almost, even that itself feels like a bit of an exploitation. Um, if not from Pia, certainly from Davis himself, where he's like, yeah, my dad, you know, died from it, technically. Because, uh, you know, he got shot by the perpetrator, but, you know, he actually died from illness later, which felt like it may have been a, you know, been a knock-on effect, but he wasn't killed. He wasn't one of the victims directly. Um, but they try to sort of frame it that way to sort of sell it to a, a company. So you've got all this going on, and you've got the ultra cynical thing where they actually go to the murder guy's house and try and film some stuff there. Um, for me though, this is where I actually got a bit more into the episode. Like I, you know, I was kind of into it when he was telling the story of this killer, but I still wasn't really sure where the episode was going or what it was ultimately going to be doing. But I started to really sort of feel it here. Um, and there's a really good dark joke, actually, where uh, Stuart, the friend, goes to pour some lemon juice on something, and they say, why are you doing that? And he says, because it'll show up on a black light as if it's blood or, or semen or something like that. And they turn on the black light, and there is just stains everywhere, all over the room. And it's like a really dark, funny like moment of, oh, you really didn't need that lemon juice. <laughs> this place is covered in stuff. Um, anyway, and that appealed to my dark sense of humor. But, you know, they're all quite jovial. They're making jokes. Um, which I think is one of the themes of this as well, is, that, is you know, people treating these heinous crimes and awful incidents with a levity as if it's something that can be exploited for entertainment. You know, the, the sort of topic that maybe comes up a lot when we do have these true crime series. And people explore why there's such a big audience for them and why people are so interested in them and is it unhealthy that people are so like addicted to watching documentaries about serial killers and shit like that it's something you know it comes up a lot but you know i know people who are way into this like and it's like literally most of what they watch and they're not like weird people (laughs) they're just that's their entertainment that's what they choose to watch um like on an almost daily basis so like it's absolutely like a, a a valid thing to look at you know from a psychology perspective um you know it's probably you know i, I like horror movies it's probably a lot like watching horror movies there's a, a comfort of knowing you're not in the danger but you've got a weird fascination of watching it and understanding it and stuff like that it's the thrills of it a little bit um but it's a little bit more morbid because it's like a real thing that happened you know obviously in this case it's not a real real thing this is like there's a real thing in the, the story but it's not a real thing in the real world it's a made up thing but anyway so you know and there, there was a weird bits of stuff to for me to relate to here you know because i made student films in scotland when i was in university and stuff like that 
<laughs> so there was like a like you know editing stuff and talking about going to school for this sort of stuff it, it all like there was just little snippets not that i live anywhere near a lock or in a small village or anything like that, that that's all pretty alien to me but um there was a lot of little things like that uh, john Hanna is in the episode uh he's kind of like our most recognizable star here um he plays Stuart's dad he's like this drunk guy who owns the pub who basically just always drinks and that's all he is um and it turns out the reason why he's a drunk is because he kind of suspected some things about all these murders that comes out and the episode takes a wild swing with this stuff uh so they're in a small car accident after they go to film stuff at the murder house which they're going to pass off as footage because they're even shooting it on a vhs camera to try and make it look like it was from the 90s so they're kind of you know, it's, it's getting especially kind of cynical with the way they're doing it um but they're all likable enough when they're actually doing all this stuff it's not like oh they all seem evil for doing it um but you know it's kind of a cautionary tale because the big reveal and there's a joke throughout the episode that uh davis's mom like loves uh was it bergerac was the old detective show she liked and she's got a bunch of old vhs tapes that are not purchased you know they're not like official releases they're all just taped off of tv and the big twist at the end or not the end but towards the end is that pia is transferring some of the footage at this point davis is in the hospital he's not seriously hurt but he needs to stay there for a little while and she ends up saying that these old Bergerac tapes eventually turn out to be snuff movies, effectively, because Davis's parents were actually involved in the, the murders. Um, honestly, one of my favorite little things is because there's a lot of jokes throughout from Stuart, especially about how the murders were weird sex stuff, and like there's a lot of sexual things, and there's a couple, there's like a quick shot of like a big dildo at one point uh, when they're showing the, the crime footage. Um, early on in the episode, and it's all very uncomfortable with Pia staying at the house and in the same bed with Davis, with the mum there, uh, they have an intimate scene uh, where they're getting down to business and it cuts to the mum, like, sort of listening to them laughing and, like, moaning a little bit. And it actually ended up being an interesting little seed of, like, because you read that as this awkward thing, oh, it's the mum here and the son can have sex and she's uncomfortable or whatever, and it's awkward. But when you get to the reveal later that she was this kinky sex murder <laughs> person, I don't even know what you call her. Because um, you see her in the footage, you know, like they, they shoot it and she comes in wearing a sexy nurse outfit with a mask on and like a drill in her hand and she's going to like do a sexy dance while she's drilling these people to death. Um, it's all very depraved. It's all very like the most extreme thing you could do. And you know, there's, there's little hints throughout of like, you know, Pia says, I don't want to hear about your mum getting wet over this actor's uh, bum, right, his ass, uh, which, you know, comes up when he's talking about the Bergerac show. Um, but that scene of, like, her listening to them in the bedroom, when you look back on it, there's almost, I want, to, I want to reference a movie here, but it's a spoiler for the movie, so I won't, but there's a movie that came out last year that had a little bit of this theme, which was an older person remembering their more adventurous, younger sexual days and missing it. And so you think back to that scene later on and you think, oh, she's actually sitting there reminiscing in her head of uh, all these great times she had with her husband uh, murdering and having weird kinky uh, sex business. <laughs> and it is, it's one of those things where when I realized she was going to find something on the tape, there was a moment where I, I thought, oh, I don't think I like this. Because, you know, uh, John Hanna is also at the hospital and he comes in and starts to try and tell Davis what he suspects about his parents. And it becomes clear that he's going to start talking to them about, like, an old secret. There's other people involved. And the way it's intercutting with Pia looking at the footage, it was like, oh, this is going to be, like, some weird twist about his parents being involved. And I wasn't really... I wasn't feeling it. It felt like kind of just a cheesy twist, and I, I wasn't sure if I was going to like it at all. But then when the footage actually started and she came in wearing this nurse outfit and holding a drill and like very menacingly like dancing over to this like couple who are tied up, I I actually kind of started to really enjoy just how batshit crazy it kind of was. Like it, it went so far. It's, it's one of those things where if it had just been she was part of the, the killings, 
it would have been a really kind of lukewarm twist to me. I'd have just been like, ah, oh, it's a twist for a twist's sake. I wouldn't have really felt anything about it. Um, but it went so extre- on the extreme end of the visuals of like seeing her walk in like that uh, and she looked like a maniac. It actually made it more entertaining and it made it more fun to me. So I'm not sure how I feel about like what this episode like succeeds at as a whole as an episode of Black Mirror. But as entertainment, it went so it, you know when it go- when it goes off the deep end, it goes really as deep as it can. And I, like, I, I tend to enjoy, what, if you're going to have a crazy twist, the crazier you go with it, the more I might get into it on the other end. Like, I may not like the concept of the twist when you start the twist, but if you go so far with it, there's a chance you might win me over by the end. And I think that this is what this kind of did. And it cuts ahead, you know, at the end of the episode. Uh, uh, the mum chases down Pia, and Pia, she doesn't even kill Pia, but Pia trips and, like, hits her head. So it's like, you know, it at least looks like she probably killed her. Uh, to the outside world um but i did uh, when i talked about cinematography that i really like there's a moment where davis's mom after pia like really awkwardly runs out the house in fear um P- uh, davis's mom like goes up to like w- you know where she was editing footage and walks in the room and sees the uh, v- vhs tape pop out the vcr and she obviously even though it says bergerac she knows exactly what's on those tapes um, she's not been aware that they've been using her tapes and she sees that and there's this great wide shot of her standing in the door frame and silhouette almost and it just this moment of like this woman's like dark past being revealed that someone knows what she got up to now uh, you can feel the weight of the moment really well and i think it's mostly just down to the direction of the scene so I, you know i have to give credit where the credit is due here i did think some of the sequences here were very well shot and i, I you know i'll give credit for that um but yeah, afterwards she pulls out her stack of tapes, she puts her box of like souvenirs from her, her sex days <laughs> on the table, uh, leaves a note saying for my son's film, and kills herself, because uh, she doesn't want to face obviously the consequences or the the, the fact that the people are going to find out about this now. Um... And we cut ahead and we see that, you know, a documentary is made about it where the new thing is that, oh, it's these two other people were involved in the interview, Davis. He wins a BAFTA. And you've got that kind of almost like, a, you know, the 15 million credits thing from season one where in a weird way, he kind of gets what at least we were told he wanted at the start of this episode, which was to be a success, to win awards, to be a household name. And he kind of is, but it's this, you know, at what cost kind of thing um there's also this idea of like you know digging into something they shouldn't have and uncovering this whole other element that's completely wrecked like his life and it's completely changed like his you know understanding of reality and may- maybe that's the the part where i'm I'm not entirely sure w- I'm not entirely sure what, what that is saying specifically. Like, I, I get the idea of digging into something you're not supposed to, and you may uncover something that you didn't want to find out, right? Obviously, you've got that element to it. You've got the idea that this is a cautionary tale of consequences, that they were digging about where they weren't supposed to, and this was almost like the comeuppance for doing so. Um, and then there's also the exploitation of, of the past and of real tragic things. And now, he, at the end, he has to feel the weight of, like, you know, this was his parents. That, you know, he lost his girlfriend. He lost all these things. It's real to him now. It's not just a subject for a documentary. So he's forced to feel the real, you know, because you know, there was that thing, right? When It wasn't the true crime documentary, but the, uh, oh, God. What was that other serial killer show that came out on Netflix? It was just last year. Um, was it Dahmer? was the Dammer one, um, but some of the family members of the victims weren't happy with how their family members were portrayed in that fictionalized TV show. And, and you know, it, it did raise some interesting you know, topics. I'm like, yeah, that, that feels kind of shitty that uh, there's real people being portrayed that, you know, there's still living members of family who remember those people and are like, wait a minute, you're kind of changing who they were for entertainment's sake and that doesn't you know that doesn't necessarily seem right um but you've got this this young guy who's now forced to kind of feel the weight of all this because now it affects him you know and he, he's crying at the end as he's looking at his BAFTA and it clearly wasn't worth it right and it reminded me of the ending of 
of the the credits episode from season one because it was very much he got this better life but at what cost probably you know not really worth it um which i think i and i think that's maybe one of the weaker parts of the episode to me is that i get exactly what it's saying here at the end of the episode but like i said earlier i don't necessarily think it really painted a character to me who is obsessed with this at the start of the episode like the people around him kind of just assumed that's what he wanted and they crack jokes about it but i never really got the sense from him that he was like that determined on his own like if anything it kind of felt like he wanted to do his niche documentary about the guy who protected faberge eggs or whatever it was that seemed like more his passion project um i mean maybe there's a a cautionary tale here as well about giving in to what the mass market wants (laughs) But I, I don't know, I feel like I'm stretching by saying that. Because he gives in to Pia's request to do this documentary instead, and then gets into it. But there was never really a point in any of that where I feel like they were... Like, until maybe they were recreating stuff that was supposed to be from the 90s, where it's maybe cr- crossing a a moral line, um, if you will. But I, I don't... I don't know if I ever really felt from his character that he was obsessed at success at all costs. So at the end of the episode, when it's like, here's your just desserts, I, I never really felt like he kind of earned this. Um, it felt like he was just caught up in a wave by those around him, and for some reason, he's the one who's now had to get, get the lesson. Um, you know, because sure is happy, his pub's filled up. He's he's delighted. Um, you know, I, but he, I think the ending... Apart from the fact that it just really made me think of another episode, so it felt like it was kind of redoing that ending a little bit, it never felt like it was, like, what the episode was building up to for me. Um, A lot of the stuff at the end, once the documentary comes out, and he's kind of, like, acting like a zombie as all this success is happening around him, I kind of, I just didn't feel like the episode really set me up for this payoff with this character. Um... I enjoyed most of the steps to get there, and I even enjoyed some of the jokes and little cute things they did at the end in these sequences, like referencing San Junipero in the the true you know, in the documentary series. Like one of them was like the Junipero Project or something like that, and that was okay. That's cute. You know, that's fun for what it is. Um, but I, I don't I don't necessarily think he gave me those vibes throughout, uh, which is kind of weird. He you know he goes along with it and he seems to get into it a little bit, but. I never, I never really got the sense that he was gunning for this. He actually felt reluctant to do it in the first place, which is maybe why I'm getting the whole, you know, because he gave in to this, um, he he's going to get this this you know consequence for it. And I, I, I just I don't think that quite worked. Which is why I think you know I say this is a, a very entertaining episode that I enjoyed watching. I, I you know I, I thought it was a bit awkward at the start Uh, because it's meant to be a bit cringy, but I don't think the actual Black Mirror part of it, the messaging, the the moral of modern society, obviously we all get what it's talking about. We get that it's talking about all these true crime documentary successes and obsessing over these dark events and using it as entertainment, right? We get that it's like dipping into all that and that it's presenting consequences for these characters for doing it. Although notably, Stuart doesn't get any consequences. Stuart gets a a busy pub. He's making money. He's delighted at the end of the episode. (laughs) He actually gets everything he wants. Pia loses her life, and then Davis is sitting there miserable because now he he knows his parents were these awful people, and uh, he's lost the love of his life. He's he's miserable. (laughs) So... I don't know why Stuart gets out scot free. Don't get me wrong, he was occasionally quite funny. I, I laughed at a few of his lines. Um For me the episode probably started to come together when Davis is telling the story of the murders and Stuart keeps butting in and kind of ruining it by adding his own little spoilers or commentary. And that was you know, that was funny. That that, that made me kind of endear to these three as a trio to, to follow and have the banter a little bit, and have them talking back and forth. I kind of enjoyed that element of it. Um, and I enjoyed them going to the murder house. I enjoyed... Despite thinking I wouldn't, I ended up enjoying some of the twist stuff, because I thought how they captured all those moments afterwards, and then the footage itself was was good. Um, but 
I almost felt like the ultra meta, like, last five minutes of, like, showing the BAFTA awards and him sitting there crying almost as he's looking at his award, I almost felt the episode would be better without it, because it, it feels like it's beating you over the head with this extra point that I don't necessarily think the character set us up for. So maybe just ending with, like, him looking at the note, maybe. Like, you know, he comes back to the house, still looking for Pia, and he sees the note for your film. Because I thought she was going to destroy all the tapes to try and hide it. But she doesn't. She leaves it for her son. She's like, I'm going to give this to him so you can do what he wants to do. Uh, she's a giving mother after all. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's a... Uh... Such a, I mean, I guess, because some of the diversity stuff at the start, uh, or the woke stuff, I should maybe call it, is, uh, so, obviously, one of the things that I've not even mentioned, really, is that Davis's dad was a policeman, and we see a photo of him in his uniform at the start, and it's, you know, the 90s police British uniform, and it's whatever, and then there's an awkward moment at the dinner table where Pia, you know, makes a little comment about, um people getting away with stealing these like eggs because they're talking about the egg documentary and she says if some you know maybe if it was someone who looked like me they'd put a stop to it and it's just a little political com comment um about a race and but it gets kind of awkward because you know, obviously with uh, davis's father being a policeman his mom kind of feels the need to jump in and sort of say well you know policemen are under a lot of stress and it's kind of awkward because she's clearly just thinking about her husband that she wants to defend um, and Pia beats herself up a little bit after because she's like, look, oh, like I just, I, I knew he was a policeman and I had to bring up, you know, a comment about, you know, shitting on cops effectively um, in front of her. And she, you know, she, she feels bad about it. And I, I guess you could say that's like a little, like, again, a little thing to subvert later is that she was actually inadvertently very right that he was like a really bad policeman that <laughs> he was doing something really 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 bad um behind you know closed doors it's, you know i guess that's like a little hint as well when you look back on it with hindsight um and there's a lot of those things there that there, there, there absolutely is uh, there absolutely is um but yeah I, I think the ultra meta you know award ceremony and the bafta and all that at the end just felt like a little bit like, the episode wasn't focusing on that enough, I don't think, to make it feel like it earned that little bit. And then some of it even felt kind of like a, like a repeat of earlier episodes. So I, I did feel a little bit down on the, the, the very ending, but the actual bulk of the story, I was entertained by. Even if I'm, I'm never going to probably put it up there with one of the better Black Mirror episodes, because I don't think that the actual commentary is is tight and is unified and makes like a, a really good point and then lots of evidence that back up that point and i'm sure there's probably some analysis that some people might be able to give to show maybe what some of these different characters represent in the context of this main theme you know someone who is influenced someone who do, who is an outsider and does want to kind of exploit even with reasonable intentions and wants to treat it tastefully and then someone who just wants to make money from it, which would be Stuart's character. Maybe, you know, maybe that's kind of what it's going for, and I can kind of respect the attempt at that. Um, but ultimately, it felt like it never really committed to really making that its its core idea, its core point. Um, it was almost more interested at a certain point of like pulling some twists and giving us some really over the top fun horror stuff. And I really enjoyed the over the top fun horror stuff, which is why I think it's a very entertaining episode anyway, even if I don't think it all holds together as well as some of the best episodes of Black Mirror do. So yeah, that's Lock Henry. That's episode two of season six. Uh, let me know what you think of this one in the comments below. Like, subscribe, ding the bell for notifications and all that stuff. Uh, you can get us on the Twitter at mail underscore fuzz for channel updates. And of course, you can support all the content over at patreon.com slash mailfuzztv and help keep it all coming. So there you go. I'll be back with episode three. Uh, it should be Wednesday for that. Uh, there'll be another TV review going out tomorrow. Um, and then probably after that, Friday. So it's, pro it's probably, yeah, it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday during this week. And then that'll leave episode five for probably... It could be the weekend, but I don't want to promise that. So... Um, episode 3 on Wednesday. Uh, look forward to that. I will see you guys soon. Keep watching TV. Have you got any vanilla?